In the beginning, man resorted to shouting to make himself heard beyond his immediate surroundings. Then, as now, the human voice could only carry so far. Later, when people learned to master fire, they used signal fires, placing them on hilltops or other clearly visible landmarks. In ancient China, signal fires were used to quickly warn the forces when the Great Wall was being attacked. In the 18th century, the optical telegraph made it possible to send coded messages. The average distance between the telegraph stations was around 10 kilometers, but could be up to three times that across waters. Samuel Morse was originally an American artist who was to become famous for his electric alphabet. In 1835, he presented the world's first commercial telegraph. For this new device, he developed the Morse code based on short and long signals. It survived by far the primitive equipment it was designed for and is still used today, both commercially and by radio amateurs. At the end of the 19th century, Italian inventor Guglielmo Marconi invented wireless signaling. By 1901, he'd managed to transmit a Morse-coded wireless message across the Atlantic, from Poldhu in Cornwall, UK, to St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. A real breakthrough in radio came in 1906, when Lee de Forest invented the triode, the first radio tube that could be used as an amplifier. This was the first step of modern electronics. At sea, the introduction of modern radio equipment on an increasing number of vessels meant that safety increased. At the same time, a new message was learnt. Three short signals, three long signals, and finally three short signals again, SOS save our souls. When the Titanic sank in 1912, it was the first naval disaster where wireless telegraphy and the SOS played an important role in saving lives. Although over 1,500 persons lost their lives, over 700 were saved by assisting vessels who picked up the Titanic's SOS signals over the radio. Now, wait a minute, Fred. If you'll With the invention of radio came the first public radio stations. A wireless at home became the highest fashion. The family would sit together to hear news and entertainment. And right from the start, people were experimenting with radios in the car. They worked, but perhaps the antenna was a bit bulky. During the two world wars, the need for wireless communication, both for the fighting forces and secret agents, led to the rapid development of smaller and more efficient equipment. In the early 1940s, we learnt a new word, walkie-talkie, the predecessor to the mobile phone. By the outbreak of the Second World War, radio positioning was well known to both the Germans and the Allies. In order to conceal their positions from German U-boats, Allied convoys maintained strict radio silence, using the optical telegraph instead. In the childhood of radio, the idea of building a mobile telephone was seen as more of a joke than a serious vision of the future. It wasn't until after the war that we saw the first serious solutions for mobile telephony. In 1956, the world's first automatic mobile telephone system, the Ericsson MTA, was introduced. With one base station in Stockholm and one in Gothenburg, it served a total of 25 subscribers, 19 of them in Stockholm. In 1981, the NMT system was launched in Scandinavia. NMT provided national coverage in both Sweden, Norway, Denmark and Finland. In those days, the telephones were still bulky, stowaway items, mainly intended for use in vehicles. It took almost another decade for mobile phones to shrink in size and weight, under half a kilo, and thus achieve pocket success. 
the introduction of GSM and similar digital standards saw the emergence of ever smaller and lighter phones, even breaking the magical 100 gram mark. GSM and short messaging service, more generally known as SMS, became a sweeping success on the mass market for mobile data traffic. In Sweden, with a population touching on 9 million, close to half a billion SMS messages were sent during the year 2000. SMS, however, is only the beginning. In the near future, your telephone will be able to do so much more, like play music, help you to book romantic dinners, or even help you make cash winnings. Ever since the first telephone, the idea of a video phone has been on most telecom inventors' minds. Well, now it isn't a dream anymore. In 1999, Ericsson demonstrated the world's first mobile video call. From 2001, 3G systems have started to blaze new trails all over the world. The video phone is just another example of how Ericsson made reality out of a vision. Ericsson, turning your mobile internet opportunities into business.